helper when I was a student. I didn't exactly sign up for chapel. Um, came from a preaching school uh, right here to Harding, but and I was excited about coming to chapel. It's the first time I've ever been on stage at chapel, I can tell you that for sure. Normally I was back there in the back nodding and trying to get, get my stuff together. Um, it's Wednesday night. Tonight, you know what that means? Hey, no, church, <laughs> then Duck Dynasty. <laughs> See how we plan that out? You can go to church and come back, and then you can watch Duck Dynasty. I was telling the first crew, I said, I'm so glad it didn't end up at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. That would have been horrible um, for me. I just got a text from Mountain Man. Now, just the thought of him texting is funny to me. But I love it when he texts because I can read it at a normal pace. <laughs> but I think about how he would say it. This is, a, this is really a text. This wasn't in the first chapel. <laughs> the first text was just a test text to see if you were still textable. <laughs> <laughs> I did not make that up. That just happened. Uh what a crazy guy. What a crazy family I got. Um, you know, uh, I, was just, I was just asked a question by the, um, what is it? Uh, PR. Uh, PR. Yeah, for the little Harding alum magazine that comes out, you'll be getting it. Um, and, and she was asking me questions, and, um, and it just, it really, it really hit home about my time here at Harding, and now to be in this position um, from student to to, to now, this year I turned 40 years old, and I've learned a lot, I've seen a lot, um, done a whole lot of things. Um, I could probably go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody if we went to dinner together, just with the stories of the places I've been and things I've done. Um, not at first, when, when, I, when I left here in my 20s, we went and Coy and I took a job. I moved back home and finished up at, um, back home at ULM and um, took a job running Camp Chioka, and I, I didn't know what exactly I was going to do. I knew that was a place that I, th I thought God wanted me at the time. I uh, went into ministry. I was a college minister. Actually, I was preaching at first, then doing youth for a bunch of little tiny, small churches. Um, that's where I think I learned to be a good storyteller, a good entertainer, uh, trying to keep the attention of teenagers and college kids and uh, a lot of those kids work for me now, uh, trained them there, worked at a camp, had a great time. In my 20s, I was able to see John, Luke, and Sadie uh, born. We had breakfast and lunch and dinner together, worked out there just in the woods, and um, wonderful, marvelous. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I told her, she said, well, the question she asked a while ago was, you know, how do you keep yourself grounded, not let it go to your head, and, you know, you've done so much. And... I said, it's, it, it doesn't happen now. It's kind of like my kids. Uh, they're well-behaved in their teens. That happened when they were two and three. That's where all the hard work was done. I didn't miss that opportunity, and now I get to uh, share in the joy of them being respectful, and it happens when you're young. What, what keeps us grounded, what keeps us, you know, our head above water is certainly our faith and the Lord and, and the things that we learn, but it's a foundation. It was built. The Lord prepared us. That, that happened at, when, when I grew up in the church. Nothing was wasted. Um, when I came to Harding, all that is useful in what I'm doing now. All the classes that I thought, I'm never going to use this. Uh, statistics, I still hadn't figured that out, you know. Um, some of these classes, I was like, why am I doing this? Got through, I had to finish the task. Finish the task helped me to finish a lot of the tasks that ended up being a show on national TV. You don't get there without finishing some things. And everything was a foundation to build us and prepare us. Um, that's why now we have the foundation to do what we do. And that's why we don't, you don't look up and, and see us doing a bunch of crazy things or going to our head or changing who we are. That was well-rooted and built in us. You're at that time right now to where you're doing that. Don't think you've 
you've wasted it by now and certainly even figure out what you want to do in your 20s. I kind of thought, man, I'm way behind. I remember when I took over Duck Commander when I was about 30, I thought, God, I wish I'd have started this when I was 20. I should have just come back and he didn't look back. I had no idea what God had in store for us. Two years ago, I had no idea where exactly we would be and things just kept leading one to another. We did a show on Outdoor Channel started another company, and then lo and behold, we get an email from Hollywood. And guess what they wanted? They wanted us just to be exactly who we were, not be different, not be anything. that The faith came along with it, the hunting, which I never thought would fly in the national TV. They wanted you just like you do. If you ever want to go to Hollywood, let me tell you what you better be. You better be who you are. Don't try to change. There's enough people out there changing to try to fit that. Like I said, I've done a lot of things. Um, I uh, Just this week, did Jay Leno, Access Hollywood, The Soup, which really made me nervous when Phil was there. It was kind of PG-13. I was like, oh, shoot, I knew I shouldn't have done this. We did The Soup. I was by the court at the Laker game. Um, talking with players, taking pictures. It was the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, Thanksgiving. It was on the star, it was on the sidelines. Um, I've sang Take Me Out the Ball Game at Turner Field with 40,000 people. By the way, that's the most nervous I've ever been in my life, with a live mic there. Um, know a lot of famous people. Next week I'm doing CMT's Artist of the Year Award Show. Um, know a lot of famous people, done a lot of cool things. I'm going to tell you some of the most coolest I've done, and it has nothing to do with anything we've done professionally or on TV or who I know. i tell you what separates me from the guys I know is knowing this. The famous people I know um, that have so much money, it's just stupid. Let me tell you what they want to know from me. It's not hunting, it's not TV, it's what I gathered over my life from this. Let me tell you, this I know. Won't put me in heaven of what I know. It's that you've got to live it, especially in front of them. Cool thing I did one time, I baptized a guy who will be in the Hall of Fame, very famous guy. So much money, it just got silly how much money this guy's got. And God put me in his house, and we were sitting up late one night, and I hadn't said anything to him. He's just, we've hung out, and he said, how do I be, how do I be a Christian? He said, I've seen Christians, and honestly, I don't really like any of them. I don't like the way it comes across. He said, now what you're doing, I can, I could do that. This is before Duck Dynasty. And I sat down, and I said, well, let's just start right here. And I ran in, first guy I've ever studied with, by the way, this is for you. You need to know that answer. And Dr. Burke said earlier, you need to be prepared to have that answer. Mostly what I do is I just listen. I don't stick it in your face, I just listen. When I hear problems, I show solutions. And I listen to this guy. I, w I took him to Galatians 5 and I read through the acts of the sinful nature. I said, um, does any of those hit you? And he went, all of them. And I never had anybody say all of them. I said, do you need, uh, do you know what the gospel is? No clue. No about heaven? Have you ever come to the Lord? Maybe at camp when you were 12? Nope. Nothing. This guy was zero empty. He had nothing. He had no knowledge. I mean, more money than those would do is very famous. And he had nothing. He was empty. He had no hope. He had no joy. He had money and he had fame and it made him miserable. Some of the most miserable people I've ever met in my life are those people. Went to his hot tub that night. He had just built a pool and a hot tub. Nobody had ever been in it. And I baptized him into the Lord that night. Now, my job was done and um, I moved on and I, and I talked to this guy, but Plant the seed. God put me there at the time. Um, my challenge to you is to do that. That's a cool thing when I look back and think, man, that's what 
that's what I want to do, is I always have that answer for folks. Coolest things I've ever done in my life that I'm most proud of is my marriage. We got, we got married on Saturday. We moved on Sunday to Searcy, Arkansas, and started this right here. January, it'll be 21 years of my marriage. Probably the most proudest thing that we've done. You know why? Because it was so hard. It's tough. So many times it just, I was thinking, this is hard. So many people bail and say, can't do it. See ya. In fact, we have a lot, you know, several people in our family, they've split up. And I mean, it's miserable. You don't get out of it. We have two Christmases. We have two this and that. And it's so sad to see them. And they tend to gravitate towards Corey and I because that's about the only thing they know that's solid that will be there. Proud of that. Stay guarded, though, because even at 21 years, you still have to be guarded. Proud of that. Proud of my third son. I love all my children. You've seen some on t probably all of them on TV. Proud of my third son. Corey and I decided to adopt. We, had, we went into marriage wanting to know that we wanted to adopt. He's biracial. He doesn't look like us. And it was the most probably selfless thing that we had ever done. Got pregnant a month later. That wasn't planned. So we have two twins. One weighs 165, one weighs about 65. Um, little Will came into our lives, and um, I challenge you a group this size. Some of you may have thought about that. I challenge you to do that. It's unbelievable. Um, that's what God did with us. You know, He took us in. Jesus is his son. We are his adopted children. And so I can look at my two sons that I have and literally see the New Testament unfolded right there. Because I have the same love for him, no different. I'm proud of that. Proud of our family, how we've stuck together, our business, obviously, keeping everybody together. And I'm so proud of the impact that we've made for the Lord. It's little things. Um, the girl asked me a while ago, she said, Has, have you seen a lot of negative stuff come from? This is going to be weird to you, but most of it is people from the church. <laughs> they look at it through a microscope instead of looking at the big picture. In my church, in my little church that I go to. I can't believe you said this. I can't believe you did that. I said, just remember, there's a big picture in a big world. We're going to take it step by step. We've got something positive. We're throwing terms around like repentance and forgiveness and ungodly. That's on national TV. Let me tell you something. And Hollywood is watching and learning and listening going, wow, I didn't realize a show like that could be the number one show on all of cable. Last week, four point, nearly 4.5 million watched it. Blew away a show called American Horror Story. I've never seen it, but two different shows. And one is soaring and going up. Thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to, the, thanks to everybody out there that's watching. We're proving our point. We're proud of that. Let me tell you why it works. We're rooted in our faith. But 1 Corinthians 13 tells us this, that love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. That's a big one. It is not easily angered. keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. The reason the Robertson family are like they are, because we love each other. Put all those things in there, we love each other. That's why at the end of the day, it all works out, because we love each other. We love the production company that comes down. We love the network, the people in the network. We love you guys. That's why we travel. That's why we sit and sign books. Because we love people. That's where it starts. Rooted in faith, but love. We have a hope of where we're going. If you have a hope that you're going to heaven, everything on this earth seems very small. I ain't nervous at all. I definitely ain't scared. And we're going to try to take as many people as we can up there. Life is short. Life is temporary. Root yourself here. Do not leave this experience at Harding without knowing when you lay in bed at night where you're going, and that you're confident in that. And then don't leave here without knowing how to tell somebody else that, in whatever way that is. We're kind of on the front lines of this thing out in Hollywood. Um, 
Boy, there's some snaky snakes out there. Whew. But we have never abandoned our faith. And we just pray that the Lord continues to bless us. So thank you, guys. Um, I will see you soon. You will see me hopefully tonight. Uh, try to race Clint Boyer and see what happens. So uh, see you guys. Thank you.